sing and I will dance. Glory to your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. High all over the earth. We lift your name. We lift your name. Lord, I'll praise, praise you with my every breath. Lord, I'll sing, shout your praise, glory to your name. Lord, I'll sing, Lord, I'll praise, praise you with my every breath. Lord, I'll sing, shout your praise, glory to your name. your name, we lift your name, we lift your name, high all over the air, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name. Up my voice, I will joyfully sing. Not for what you have done for me, but for who you are. You are the reason I live. Melody, in my heart, the song that I sing is to praise you. For who you are, you are the reason I sing. Melody in my heart, the song that I sing is to praise you, Lord. Shout hallelujah, oh hallelujah, everybody shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, everybody shout hallelujah. Glory 
must be to the Lord in the highest. Glory be to the Lord in the highest. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. Oh, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name. Oh, shout a name, shout a name, oh, shout a name, shout a name. Oh, shout a name, shout a name, oh, shout a name, shout a name. Oh, we lift your name, we lift your name. We lift your name, oh, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name, oh, shout a name, shout a name, shout a name, shout a name, oh, shout a name, shout a name, shout a name, shout a name, oh, shout a name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let's lift up our voice and worship the Lord tonight. What an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. What a privilege we have before the Almighty God tonight to worship Him. I just want to enjoy our hearts. Let's exalt the name of the Lord. Let's lift Him up on high. He is the Ham, the Ram. He is the reason why we are here tonight. He is the Almighty God. He rules the nations. No one can compare to the Lord. He is the Jehovah, El Shaddai, Adonai, Hallelujah, Israel. He is the El Elyon. He is Yahweh. Exalt His name. Magnify the name of the Lord tonight. Saints of God, let's bless the name of the Lord. Our God is worthy of our worship. He has made you and I. We have not made ourselves. The psalmist says we are the people of his pasture and we are the sheep of his hands. Lift up your voice and exalt the name of the Lord tonight. Lift him up on high. Declare his praise. Ascribe glory to the Lord. Ascribe the dominion and power. Ascribe majesty unto our God. Oh yes, he, he rules in Jacob unto the hands of the earth. He rules by his power forevermore. He's the great God above all gods. He's the great king above all kings. He's the king of glory. The Lord of glory. The father of glory. Worship the Lord tonight. Saints of God, let's exalt his name together. He's worthy to be glorified. Yes, the father is seeking for true worshipers. Who will worship him in spite of their circumstances in spite of their situations who will worship him in spirit and in truth the bible says the father seeks for such persons i don't know if you're a worshiper in this place tonight of viewing online go ahead and worship this great god whose glory is above the heavens whose glory is above the earth his glory is above the seas and the deep places he's full of majesty Words cannot describe his splendor. Oh, awesome God. What an awesome God we worship. What an awesome God we serve. Go ahead and bless his name tonight. Declare his worship. Hallowed be your name. Yes, you are God by yourself alone. No one can compare to you. We worship you. Lale la ba so sengalila, a karam baranda ya la shanga, lam baranda zenda ya karala, ram baranda ya na ya karanda ya, shema barandega, 
randa ya da ra 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 ma o ma randa ya ra shakale na ye ka randa ya je ma randa ya ra 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 ba ram ram do song la la o ma randa ya ra ra worship the lord tonight in the beauty of holiness give god the glory due to his name no one can compare to the lord besides him there is none else randa ya la 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 ba ba Baranda ya kalala ya je maranda ya kara ram barande se kaye aranda ya karanda ya ra je maranda ya la la janga la 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 ra barando jo songa ya lia worship the lord tonight exalt his holy name exalt his holy name is half an omega is the beginning and the end is the first and the last go ahead and exalt his name go ahead and bless his name is jehovah awesome god our all in all we exalt your name oh maranda ya la 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 jambaranda sangaye akaranda ire bobobo sangaya glorious name there is no like you we worship you tonight in the beauty of holiness we give you the glory due to your name lord we ask for your manifest presence in this meeting tonight we ask for the lordship of jesus we ask that you take the preeminence we ask that your spirit will take control and jesus will be glorified thank you precious father for in jesus name we have worship in jesus name we have worship Hallelujah. Beloved, we're going to pray tonight. We're praying tonight. This is the, the, uh, the, in this second phase of our prayer call, this is the third day. We'll be rounding up on Friday. We'll be praying 6 a.m. every morning and 6 p.m. every evening. So I want us to, to, to turn in our Bible. I just read one verse of Scripture, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. And the Bible says, Ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. I want to lift up our voice. We're going to pray for every member of this church. As, as we're praying, I remember when Pastor was mentioning about um, the connection to this verse of scripture about revival, refreshing, and restoration. We're going to pray for this church that by reason of this rain we've been believing in God for, that God will bring revival upon his people. God will bring restoration upon his people. Yes, God will bring refreshing by his presence upon every 
member, every family, every life. Oh, yes, connected to International House of His Presence. Open your mouth and pray. Yes, we are going to pray. This is the time of the latter rain. He said, We shall ask of the Lord, if it rain in the time of the latter rain, it will cause there to be bright clouds, it will cause it to rain upon everyone grass. Pray that as the rain of God comes, it will bring refreshing, it will bring restoration, it will bring a revival amongst God's people. Open your mouth and pray tonight. Oh yes, Karam Branda Sangaya. Hey, is the Kairos movement of the word of the Lord even unto us? Let's pray for the manifestation. Yes, of the rain, of the rain of God upon every life, bringing restoration, bringing revival. Yes, <laughs> things that ought not to die that have died or are dying will be revived by the Spirit of the Lord again. Open your mouth and pray. Ministries. Giftings, talents, abilities that are not to die. Oh, yeah, that are dying or are dead will be revived again by the Spirit of God. Open your mouth and pray tonight. Pray, yes, for the refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. Pray for revival in a misa. Revival among God's people, amongst our leaders, amongst our workers, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, open your mouth and pray restoration hey of all the things that have been lost yes the years that palmer worms the year that caterpillar the year that canker worms have eaten have destroyed in the lives of god's people in their spiritual life in their health in their finances pray for restoration Ask ye, Lord, ask ye, ask ye the Lord, ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. Hey, it shall cause there to be bright cloud. It shall cause it to rain upon everyone. It shall make rain. It shall cause it to rain upon everyone. Grass pray tonight. As many who have lost things in the past, you have lost, you have lost investments. You have lost uh, even time you have lost relationships you have lost valuables you have lost tangible things you have lost intangible things pray for a restoration in this season of the rain of the outpouring of God upon us in the international house of his presence pray restoration coming upon God's people restoration hey, many have lost in their relationships many have lost huge investments Many have lost contacts. Many have lost valuables. Pray all the years that the caterpillars, yes, the, the palmer worms, the canker, canker worms have eaten deep into people's lives. Pray there will be restoration. Yet, Karanda Yaya, as the rains come, as the showers come from heaven, yes, it will be refreshing. It will be restoration. Intercede on behalf of every member of this church. Pray for yourself. Refreshings are coming. Refreshing is coming from the presence of the Lord. Restoration is coming. Revival is breaking out. Pray tonight. Many have lost things. Hey. Many have, many have, many have lost valuables, tangibles. Many have lost the things. Many have talents and ability, spiritual capacity that decaying. Revival is coming tonight ha. by the rains of the spirit, by the rain ha. from above, refreshing of the Holy Ghost. Ha. Revival is coming tonight. Many have lost even their health. Ha. Restoration is coming. Yes. Bodies that are dying will be revived by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Zekaranda, yeah. Ministries that decaying, ministries that are dying, hey, will be revived tonight as the rains 
from heaven come down the rain of the refreshing the rain of the presence of God the rain of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost of the blessings of God it will bring restoration it will be revival it will bring even restoration it will bring refreshing yes as many who are spiritually dry and out in this house yeah refreshing comes from the presence of the law this is the time of the lateral yes pray to zebra upon every one grass of the field upon every family every life every man every woman in the name of jesus hallelujah in the name of jesus i want to pray for a pastor to now be ministering just shortly after now Pray for more grace for God's servant and accuracy in the spirit in the name of Jesus. As he speaks for God's word, pray. He will speak as an oracle of God as he leads us tonight. Yeah, pray that the Holy Ghost will inspire him in the name of Jesus. He will speak with boldness. He will speak with accuracy. He will be precise in the name of Jesus. Pray for the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon our pastor. God will anoint our pastor with the Holy Ghost and power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah hallelujah let's bless the name of the lord tonight let's exalt his holy name for answers to prayers go ahead and exalt his holy name lord we bless your name we exalt you we declare this meeting hope in the name of the lord jesus hallelujah in jesus name we pray and please you may be seated in the presence of the lord help me welcome some close and say you are welcome into god's presence let me ask that person if you don't know the person's name, ask after the person's name. What's your name? We sit by people sometimes, one month, two months. We don't even know their name. We don't care. That's, there is a difference between a teaching center and a church. A teaching center, you just come here, the water, and, and disperse. A church is meant to run a segment of family life. You know each other. You care for each other. You support each other. You stand with each other. It's a community. A teaching center is, um, you just hear the word and then you disperse, just like what you can get on radio, on a podcast or television. So, but we're not running a teaching center here. We are having church. All right. Um, we started to look into the word ministry, the ministry of the word of God. And we'll continue that line of thought today. We, this will be the third part in the series and the second part in the benefits of God's word. The benefits um, of God's word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again tonight. We thank you for your help. We thank you for your mercy. We don't take anything that um, comes from your throne into our lives for granted. The benefit of life the benefit of divine life, the benefit of mercy, that our sins are forgiven, our youths are renewed, that we're able to have a hope for tomorrow, we're able to demonstrate faith in you. We don't make light of these divine benefits in our lives and we ascribe the greatness and the goodness to you. As we look into your word tonight to disciple the saints, to bring understanding to the simple, to transform lives and thereby transforming society, we ask that, Lord, grant us readiness of mind, help us to comprehend the truth of your word, that we may not just be hearers of these things, but that we also may demonstrate a corresponding action in the light of the truth contacted. We trust you to do it. We trust you to exceed our expectations. We trust you to glorify your name. We thank you, Father, because we are prayed in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, believe in amen. Yeah, so we, we, I'd still like to challenge us on the importance of God's word. God himself used his word to shape the heavens, to create the heavens and the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the word of the Lord, the earth was established. When you study in the book of Proverbs, you come to an understanding of that. I think like Proverbs chapter 24. The Bible makes us to understand in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. How? By his word. He sent his word and created things. He sent his word and shaped things. And so if we're going to be followers of God, if we're going to be children of God, we cannot walk 
out of synchronization or out of alignment with his ways. A child of God is not by looks. A child of God is not by church attendance. Even though that sets certain things in motion, creates an awareness. A child of God is the proof of our, our divine paternity is in the practice of what God practices. Doing what God does. Doing what God did. And so we need to recognize God created the heavens and the earth by his word. Also recognize that people who have done anything of significance for God, people who have done anything of significance for God with the signature of God on what they did, with the endorsement of God on what they did, they did not walk without the role of the word of God in their lives, in any sphere of life, in family life, in business life, in commerce, in government, in governance, those who have brought the influence of God into any sphere of society were able to do those things by the word of the Lord. It was by the word of the Lord that one Daniel who entered into Babylon as a prisoner of war and started to have divine influence, shaped their culture, brought influence to their king, uh, saw the things to come, gave a direction to society. It was by the word of the Lord. The same Daniel, by the word of the Lord, was able to study the word of the Lord, the prophecies of Jeremiah, and recognize that God had an appointed time for his children to be in captivity because of the rebellions of their hearts. And they were to be in captivity for 70 years. So by the word of the Lord, you study Daniel chapter 9, you study Daniel chapter 10, he realized that the 70 years had passed. So he positioned on the basis of the word of the Lord to begin to ask for a turning of their captivities. For God to fulfill the word of the Lord, he had spoken through Jeremiah that after 70 years, you will call on me, I will answer you. So he started to call on the Lord. After 70 years, I will bring you back to this place, the land of your inheritance, and you will prosper there. And so he placed those demands on the Lord according to the word of the Lord. You cannot become anything of significance for God without the role and the influence of the word of the Lord in your life. Does that mean professors in society, they are not significant? Does that mean researchers and inventors are not significant? Does that mean those who construct bridges over the waters are not significant? There are significant people in the society. But what I said is, if you are going to do anything of significance for God, that brings honor to God, that brings attention to God, that makes people to begin to realize there is a God who rules in the affairs of men. Like Nebuchadnezzar realized in Babylon at the instance of one righteous and child of God, Daniel. Like Pharaoh realized in Egypt at the instance of one child of God, Joseph. If you are going to do anything of significance for God, that will point to God and bring glory to God, you cannot do such without the word of the Lord. So I really want to emphasize the importance of God's word in our lives. You study Jesus' life, there was nothing Jesus did. His life was scriptures in fulfillment. From birth to death to resurrection. The life of Jesus was scriptures in fulfillment. He was born according to the word of the Lord. He was conceived according to the word of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 7, you read, I think it's verse 14. Uh, 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 um, a virgin shall conceive. A virgin cannot conceive normally. But here he says, the virgin shall conceive. And his name shall be called Emmanuel. So you see from his birth and throughout his life, and so I read to us from Hebrews chapter 10 and last week from verse 5 to verse 7. He said, lo, I come. Jesus speaking there. Lo, I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will. The will of God is the word of God. So you see Jesus' life and ministry was shaped by the word of God, was, uh, was lived based on the word of God. He, everything about his life and ministry was built on the word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is alive. 
The word of God is able to cause changes. And we decided to bring to attention three things we shared from last week. How that if you are going to be effective in the place of prayers, if God will give you audience in the place of prayers, anyone can pray. Many people pray. Few people get answers. Because prayer is not just because you pray. Prayer is not just you put the name of Jesus at the end of it. Prayer that get God's attention must be according to God's will. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will. I want to challenge people in here, the people of this generation, on site, online, wherever, and those who listen to this hereafter and watch this hereafter, how important to provoke God into your life if you will practice the word of God. You can prompt God into action in your life if you will live your life within the boundaries of the provisions of God's word. So God's word is the basis for prayers that get God's attention. We shared that last week. God's word benefits those who act on it. They are preachers of God's word and their lives fall short of God's word. They are teachers of God's word who you begin to see great disparities between what they teach and the life they live. It is not the teachers who are blessed by the word, who receive the benefits of the word. It's not the preachers who receive the benefits of the word. It's not even those who study the word who receive the benefits of the word. The doers, the doers, the doers. You want the benefit of the word? Become a practitioner of the word. Live, let your lifestyle be shaped by the word of God. And then we also brought to our attention last week that the word of God one benefit it also brings to us is that he's able to break any ungodly. We put that condition there. The word of God is able to break any ungodly barrier because there are godly barriers. God will only have you to marry only in the Lord. God will have you to conduct your life in the kingdom in righteousness. And so when you conduct your life in the kingdom but not in righteousness, you just remove the godly barrier. So, and there are people like that, speak in tongues, read the Bible. Uh, those are evidences of life in the kingdom, but they are living in unrighteousness. They are living in compromise. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. So, God will not only have you to be in the kingdom, confess Jesus as Lord, and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speak in other tongues. God will also have you live your life within the boundaries of his word. But where there are boundaries that are not by God, barriers that are put by the enemy, barriers that are put by society, God is able by his word to break any ungodly barrier. And so we take this further today. The word of God is able to produce revelation and direction. That's the fourth benefit I'd like to bring to attention, but the first for today's uh, session. It produces revelation and direction. I read Psalm 119, verses 105 and 130. The psalmist says here, the word, thy word, your word is a lamp. I'm reading from the King James now. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. And then it goes on to say, the entrance of thy words, verse 130 now, give it light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Wow. Thy word is a lamp to my feet. I don't want to be stagnant. I want to move around. I don't want to move around aimlessly. I don't want to grope in the dark. I don't want to stumble. I don't want to walk around aimlessly. He said God's word is able to bring illumination to your feet. Then he also goes on to say God's word will bring light illumination to your path you will not only be illuminated to see your environment you will also receive illumination to see where to go lamp to my feet environment lamp to my feet environment light to my path 
There is a pathway to live as a young man who will not want to live in compromise and sin. He said, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. So you see here, the word of the Lord, it says, it brings illumination to my environment. I suddenly see I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I suddenly realize when the light shone that this is not what I bargained for. Then he says, it, is, it brings light to your path. You begin to see how to walk out of a wrong environment, a wrong location. The word of the Lord is able to bring light to you regardless of your age, regardless of your status, regardless of your life, I mean, of your walk, the nature of your walk. The light of God, the word of God is able to bring illumination to your path. Pathway and describes where to go, how to go. But then look at it further, one, verse 130. The entrance of your word. So you should not only know from verse 105 the potentials in the word, what the word can do in your life. Illumination for your environment, illumination to bring you direction. Then how do I get illumination? The entrance of your word. Until the word enters, you may be groping in the dark, even in church. Until the word enters your heart. Cerebral knowledge of the word may not bring divine illumination. Have you not read of professors of religion who are head of Kegai's club? Where they sing all the Christian hymns and Christian songs in a derogate that desecrates the word of God. I was with one of my friends in Lagos recently at a conference. He, he, he lives and works in, in London. <laughs> and then he said, we were the henchmen of Kegai's club. That not only were we the henchmen, we all the Kegai's club all over the campus. He said, this, my campus was world headquarters. I said, so you know, people now they desecrate. Them. Because they will not sing normal songs, secular songs. They sing Christian songs and desecrate every holiness in it. So, and you see their patrons are head of religion sometimes. Because cerebral knowledge is not what brings divine illumination into people's parts. My mom used to pastor a church. And then she went to a Bible school and got, or she got this associate pastor. Who, his qualification was that he went to Bible school. His qualification was that he had, was not that he had been to Christ or he had met Christ. He had been to Bible school. Oh my goodness, the kind of the kind of problem this guy gave me. It was one of the reasons why I didn't want to pastor. I didn't want to have anything. I just wanted to be born again. I didn't want to have anything to do with pastoring. Oh, what problems this guy gave me. Until the day my mom decided to sack, um, sack him, as my mom was driving away, he jumped on the, <laughs> on the, on the bumper of the, and held onto the car and was following my mom. Real rascal. Went to play with table, table, table tennis in the neighborhood. Pastor, play table tennis in the neighborhood. When they beat him, he gave the guy who beat him thorough physical beating. After table tennis beating, gave the guy thorough physical. You don't know me. Forget this pastor thing. <laughs> so, as powerful as the word of God can be to bring illumination to your environment. Illumination of the pathway to walk in. Until it enters your heart. The entrance of thy word. The entrance of thy word gives light. Some of us, like me, let me talk about myself. I will not be angry with myself. I may talk about you, you get angry. Why did the pastor use me as an example? Someone like me, they preach to me so day, But my heart was still full of darkness. Until that word entered my heart. Then I suddenly realized, after a span of about four or five years... That really, what have I been waiting for? One regret I have in my life now as a Christian is that, why didn't I get born again much earlier? My life would have been better off. I would have taken advantage of certain situations. What are we saying here? The entrance of your word. You want it to illuminate your environment. You want it to illuminate your path, the path of your job, the path of your marriage. It must enter. The entrance of your word gives light. Illumination. 
and it brings understanding. Suddenly you will realize that this way you have been treating your relationship, this way you have been working in the office is not the divine way that gets divine blessings. The word of God is able to bring divine direction. Or in the context of Psalm 119, those verses we quoted, is able to bring divine illumination. Because by illumination, your environment is lit. By illumination, your pathway, where to go, how to go about it, is illuminated. The word of God is able to bring divine direction into your life. It will help you to walk in the path. Where God can be found. There are many religious people who are walking in a location where God is farthest. Or they're in church, groping in the dark. They're in marriage, groping in the dark. God gave them a life partner, but they're groping in the dark. God gave them a job, but they're groping in the dark. It is the word of the Lord, the entrance of his word, and the application of his word that will bring you into a pathway where God can be found. Where God's presence is certain. Where God's resources. The resources of favor. Even where you need mercy. You feel you should have done what you are not meant to do. You need the mercy of God. You cannot get the mercy of God away from the presence of God. It is the word of the Lord that will bring you into a pathway. Where you can find God where you can find heavenly resources, where you can find, where God will keep you company. So that no matter the shaking out there, no matter the storms out there, as long as God is in your boat, God is in your company, you can ride those storms. Are you still in here tonight? Don't let your, the storms of life panic you so much. You should be concerned. Is God in your boat? Do you have God as company? As for storms, they will always be there. As for challenges, they will always be there. As for trials, they will always be there. As for delays, they will always be there. But one thing divine company will do for you is the delays to you, you are not even aware they are delays. Or the delays will be terminated by the word of the Lord. Because where the word of God finds dwelling, where the word of God finds dwelling, it will not only create a pathway for your life, it is a pathway where God can be found. May God be found in your life. May God be found in your marriage. May God be found in your home. May God be found in your children. May God be found in your business. May God be found in your scholarship. May God be found in your academics. God's word will bring you into a pathway where God can be found and where God will keep you company. So don't make light when you you when sometimes when you have serious appointments, you have serious exams, you shut down everything. You shut down your phone. You shut down your television. You shut down your neighbors. You, you go to a place where you cannot be disturbed. The same attitude you should have towards the word of God. In due course, I'll be showing us how that you will see when Jesus gave the parable of the sower. It shows four different conditions of the hearts of men, of even people who hang around church and hang around religion. That you can be in church and the word of God is falling by the wayside of your life. Where vultures can come and pick it and chew it. In. What you should eat to change your life, vultures come to eat it. Pluck it out of your life. Pluck it. Because you have not made it to find good ground, to be well rested, to be a, I mean, to grow roots so that it may bear fruits. So vultures, birds of prey, they come around, they pick what was meant to transform your life, but because it fell by the wayside in your heart, they pick it away. You don't find problem. I will deal with those things by the wayside in the midst of a rocky terrain and then the one that fell into the midst of thorns and then the ones that fell into good ground they are conditions of human hearts as they listen to god's word so for some it comes this way and flies out almost immediately before it takes root god's word will bring you in a pathway when you study it and you live by it it brings you into a pathway where god can be found it brings you into a pathway where your conscience will come alive in God's will. 
Someone called me a few days ago. I was in Abuja on Monday. And then he was trying to make an appeal to me on behalf of someone else. I said, listen, what you are telling me is an advice. I can take it. I can refuse to take it. He said, eh, let your conscience talk to you. <laughs> I was, see this guy trying to use emotional blackmail on me. He, I think we're all supposed to be Christians. I said, really? But when you called me, you called me pastor this. Then I processed in my mind maybe because also some pastors have violated the terms. He said, let, let, let your conscience speak to you. I said, thank you, sir. <laughs> but you know one thing? When God's word fills your heart and you live by it, it will not chore your conscience. You will not need for external influences or strangers who don't even know you coming to ask you whether you are a Christian or whether your conscience is speaking to you because your conscience, the moment you violate things, violate relationships, your conscience will come alive. Why did you behave like that? Why did you talk like that? The word of God is a very good instrument to nurture your conscience. If your conscience is not nurtured by God's word, it may not be reliable to give you Christian guidance or to help you to navigate on the right path. God's word, God's word, God's word, God's word will help to nurture your conscience, develop your conscience so that you live your life in a manner that is pleasing to God. God's word is able to bring divine direction into your life. It will help you walk in a path where divine resources can be supplied. You need the resources of angelic ministry. You need the resources of one of our sons had a, a ghastly accident. Just two weeks ago, they will come and share that testimony in due time. And then I talked with the guy who brought them to the hospital because I went to meet them in the hospital that Sunday morning. That was a Sunday my wife could not attend service she had to stay the guy said how they even how they came out of that accident he doesn't know and he said just behind where they smashed into a tree there was a gully they were entered some assaulted and it's off the road nobody would have known they're there but the two young men were on the roadside holding each other then two days later they called one of these people, panel beaters, showed him the video of the wreckage of the, uh, he said, ah, this one, we've handled things like this, we'll, 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 we'll restore it fully. <laughs> so they said, this is video, come and see the real thing. When he got to where the wreckage was, he said, ah, I didn't know it's up to this, I, I cannot fix this one. <laughs> How are those children rescued? There is no doubt. When you see the smash, your hand cannot even enter the front section. Of, I mean, you cannot even pick a pin. And human beings, two human beings came out of that place. With a minor, uh, one went back to school immediately. The one had just a minor condition on the knee. What am I saying to us here? The word of the Lord in his life, the word of the Lord in his parents' life, Produce resources on life's way. Challenges are there. Storms are there. Trials are there. Attacks are there. But God's word is, will put you in a place where divine supplies can be reached. Divine supplies will come your way. The supplies of angels. The supplies of the blood of the covenant. The supplies of divine power. The supplies of supernatural provision. The supplies of goodwill from all men. Don't joke with God's word. Don't let people make you desecrate God's word. Don't let you people tell you what you need is miracles. Because the word of the Lord is a habitat for the miraculous. <laughs> it's a breeding ground for the supernatural. So when you're only looking for the fruits, rather than creating an environment where you will have both the roots, the tree, the leaves, the fruits that you can pluck from at any time, you will be depriving yourself. You will have a, 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 an equation of a disadvantage when you are only seeking the miracles. It's like a man who does not care about the process. All he's looking for is the end result. But we are saying the, the word of the Lord, we provide the process, provide an enabling environment. 
It could be for fruits of the womb. It could be for a job. It could be for a life partner. It could be for healing. It could be for academic excellence. The word of the Lord will not only give you the finished product from the factory. The word of the Lord will, will create a factory in your life. Where the engines for producing the finished articles are there. Where the, the engines for doing the packaging, the engines for removing the juice from the fruit, they are in the factory. The word of the Lord. We create an envelo environment where divine supplies can come to you. And I like to say this here tonight. Every human being, we're emphasizing the benefit of the word of the word of the Lord in its ability to bring revelation and bring direction to us. Every human being needs direction. And there is no human being God created and sent on earth that he wants to deprive of direction. Every human being needs direction. The young needs direction. The rich need direction. The man needs direction. The woman needs direction. The young lady needs direction. The student, the teenager, the infant. We all need direction. And if we don't get direction from the original source, there are counterfeit alternatives that look like it. There are counterfeit alternatives that are there to force you into the direction they provide. The direction social media can provide you. The direction perverted media content can provide the married man, the rich person, the housewife, all categories of people. If you don't seek the word and the direction the Lord can bring to you by his word, there are counterfeit alternatives contending to give you direction. And in many cases, we're not even aware. But by the time you look at decisions you have taken over the last two months in your life, 80% of them came from social media content. We push out messages on, on social media. But it's not only social media content. There are things that more and more, the way you take, the, every time you take a step in what they advise you, every time you take an action in what they advise you, they are taking you gradually away from your maker. Give you options. Give you direction. No wonder he said in Proverbs chapter 1. I think you remember from verse 24 also. My son, if sinners entice you, say no. That's what one translation. I think it's New Living. Simply say no. When you say, ah, we'll make money. Oh, all this your suffering. This one, that your inflow is not up to your outflow. Your outflow is times three of your inflow. This is easy money. Look, all these white people, they also, deep, they cheated us. They duped us. When they came, all those colonial masters, this is now time to pay them back. We'll make good money. You will go on vacation abroad with your children and your wife. The wife that you love. Let's have a common account. Let's go and swindle these people. You are so intelligent. This your ICT skills is perishing and you are suffering. Let's use it. My son, how will you know that to say no to that? Because the word of the Lord is showing you another way. A superior way. A way where God can be found. A way where your conscience will come alive. The moment you even think about it, your conscience comes alive. You of all people. Baba Ladura. Yeah, it's true. Ah, God, but you know, it's my financial challenges. It's, it's what is even making. Even when he was telling me, something was telling me, is no, 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 I shouldn't be doing. But you know, the bills, school fees, house rent, fuel, diesel for generator, 700 naira per liter. How person won't survive? <laughs> My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. How will you have power to say no to this? Because you have said yes to God. Every one of us need direction. Me, oh, your pastor, I need direction. And I cannot afford at this stage of my life to be dabbling, to be gambling, to be probing in the dark. 
to be doing trial and error because every trial of and by error that I engage, I may be jeopardizing the lives of hundreds, the destiny of several others. I must take sure steps. The word of the Lord is able to provide that for me. The word of the Lord wants to bring direction into your life, young lady, young man, student, captain of industry. In your wealth, God wants to show you how to handle your wealth. When you study true scriptures, you observe society, many people's bigger problem came when wealth came. When there was no wealth, they were humble. To pay tight of 10,000 naira, not be 1,000 naira, I feel pay. But now, $50,000. Proceeds of a genuine business. $5,000. You want to kill pastor? Has he seen that before? But you, that you will have the remaining $45,000, you will not be killed though. <laughs> How much money? I, I don't take your tithe so I have wages. Let me leave that. So the word of the Lord is able to bring direction into your life. And we all need direction. That you assume you don't need direction. It shows that you're already on a direction. That is dangerous. I don't want anybody to guide me. I'm a teenager. I, I want to be free for myself. I don't want anybody. I don't want daddy mommy to come and be telling me. Anyway, if they will not listen. I'll just code my lifestyle. Codes all around. Password my phone. Code everything in my room. Code the language on and talking to my friends. Since they want to be monitoring me with a monitoring spirit, let me also codify everything. <laughs> a, a, a proverb in my vernacular is just floating to my spirit. But I don't want to confuse you with my, with my vernacular proverb, so let me leave it. <laughs> are you still here or you are elsewhere? We are saying to you, dear friends, you need direction. You have, you need direction. To know how to use what you have. You don't have, you need direction. Do you know that this cerebral competence has brought problem to some people rather than benefit? Because though God gave you cerebral competence, you have made strange influences, perversions, corruptions to hijack your cerebral prowess. But God is saying, look, I gave you this for a purpose. To be my light in the field of academics. To shine my light among intellectual people. Among people who are Greeks. Who are always seeking wisdom. That you may tell them that ultimate wisdom is in God. But you allow the system, the perversions, the corruptions to hijack your mind. And though you are still intelligent, there is nothing that glorifies God about your intelligence. You are already on a direction farther and farther from your maker. We are saying whatever you have, you should not allow it to bring you direction. What you should allow to bring you direction is your maker. Is your God. All youths in the house, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 1, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. When you remember him the days of youth, he will show you why you are the way you are, what you should become in the future, how you can become in the future, the pathway into that greatness of the future. Every one of us needs direction. Let me deal with one more today. And I'm not even sure I'll be dealing with this next week. I, I have four to deal with here, but let me see if I can deal with one or two more. So the word of God helps us to find revelation, divine revelation, divine direction, regardless of your estate, your gender, or your situation. Closely related to this, I'd like to also deal with this. Another benefit in God's word is that it helps to shape our lives, shape your life in God's will. The word of God has power within it to shape every human life in a manner that is pleasing to God. Within God's word is God's power to bring positive and divine changes. You need a change in your mindset. One of the major areas every Christian, a new Christian needs changes 
is not just change of the size of your pocket and change in the work of your hands, but a change of mindset. The way you think. One of the greatest freedoms a Christian can experience is to have the freedom of mind. That you, you are not only born again, your mind is being renewed by the word of God. Let's see Romans chapter 12 here as we get on. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to verse 2. I beseech you therefore brethren. So this brethren means believers. It's not brothers. It means believers. By the message of God that you present your body is a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God. Which is your reasonable service. Please let me get to the New King James Version. He said, I'm being not conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Changing your mind. Lest you are born again, but you are walking to old mindset, according to old mindset. Lest you, you have received Jesus as Lord, but your mind still rules and your mind is carnal. Your mind is fleshly. Your mind is still ruled by ungodly thoughts and influences. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, that you may prove what is good, uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I like to say here, Every will of God is acceptable. Every will of God is good. Every will of God is perfect. And so the word of God it helps to change our mindset. The word of God helps to shape our mindset. From a worldly, carnal, defeatist and ungodly mindset. To a mindset that believes that with God all things are possible. To a mindset that believes that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so it does not look like it's in the natural. But God is saying but you can do it. And so you can do it. All things are possible with God. The Bible says when you read in Mark chapter 10 and verse 27. Jesus saying there. He said with God with men these things are impossible. He said but not with God for with God all things are possible. Then I realized along the line that it is not only with God that all things are possible. I started to see that interactions with God, interactions with his word, begins to shift your mindset from what you think is impossible because he also says in Mark chapter 9 verse 23 that all things are possible. Not to God now, but to him who believes in God. Because as you believe in God, the more you believe in God. And how do you believe in God? It is by his word. It is by the study of his word. It is by the practice of his word. So the more you believe in God, the more you study his word, the more you apply his word, the same power to handle the impossible that rests in God begins to flow into your life. Note those two scriptures and go and study them. Mark chapter 10 verse 27 that these things are impossible with man, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. And then now, Mark chapter 9, verse 23, he said, all things are possible to him who believes. Not believing in yourself or believing in news reports, but the one who believes in God. Because the context there was about a man who needed um, help for his child and was placing a demand on Jesus. The word personified. And Jesus told him all things, I mean, are possible to him who believes. The word of God is able to help you shape your life into God's will. The word of God is like a mold. The word of God is like a template. You get into it, you come out with the shape that template provides. And how do you get into it? By applying the word of God into your life. By living your life according to God's word. Look at this here. Not just in your mindset, but in your life. Wherever you have been defeated. Wherever you have been told no good thing will come out of your life. Wherever you have been told you are useless. The word of God begins to shape your mindset. 
The word of God begins to tell you, no, you are not a failure. The word of God begins to say, I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a future and an expectation. The word of God begins to show you light. Where either to you have become used to darkness. He said, those who are seated in the regions of darkness, to them great light has sprung forth. And those who are seated in the regions of the shadows of death, to them they have seen great light. So the word of God will sh is able to shape your life and make you have a victorious life in Christ Jesus. The word of God is able to shape your marriage. Your marriage looks contentious. You and your wife are always at loggerheads. You and your husband, you are always contending. I will not accept you this time. I know be mumu. My parents did not give back to mumu. I will not take nonsense from you this time. As you allow the word of God to shape you, to shape your conduct in your marriage, to shape how you relate to your spouse, to shape how you, you talk to your wife, to shape how you talk to your husband, you begin to realize the contentions begin to abate. They begin to diminish. You begin to realize that the prince of peace is bringing his peace into your marriage. The word of God is able to shape any area of our lives. Not just when we know it, but when we enter the mold by practice and obedience. It will shape your mindset. It will shape your life. It can shape your marriage. It can shape your family. Where people have thought, oh, this is a dysfunctional family. Everybody does that we do, um, seems good in his own sight. They do all, all manner of things. A good example is Jacob. That came out of a covenant man's household, Isaac. But Jacob lived a reckless life. Jacob lived, um, slept with elder sister. Slept with younger sister. Slept with elder sister's uh, house girl. Slept with younger sister's house girl. And in that one house, had four women. That produced 12 rascals. But as he became a covenant man. And the word of God started to influence his life. And the word of God started to shape his life. Out of a dysfunctional family. A mighty nation arose. Israel is labeled. Not according to the sons of Abraham. Not according to the sons of Isaac. But according to the sons of this rascally young man. Who met God. It's also a message of hope. That no matter how useless your life has been. No matter how disjointed your life has been. No matter how dysfunctional your family has been. If you will bring your life into the roadmap of God's word. And live your life according to God's word. Where there has been dysfunction. There will be order. Where there has been chaos and confusion. There will be peace and decency. And these rascals, these two, two of them ganged up. They killed all the men in the whole community. He said because the prince of that land slept with their sister. I mean, another one rose up, left home, slept with a stranger. The stranger gave back to three boys. The first one misbehaved. God killed him. That's what the Bible says. The second one misbehaved. He died. Then the third one, he said, I will not let this woman sleep with this one too. It's like there's something upon her from her father's house. He has made my sons to die. Eventually, this man, one of the sons of this, from this dysfunctional family, slept with his son's wife, Judah. But of the same Judah, Jesus came forth. Not as Judah, the one sleeping anywhere, sleeping everywhere. But because out of a dysfunctional family, that met God and started to live their lives according to God's word. God changed the trajectory of their lives. In case you are in here, in case you are online and you feel no good thing can come out of this family. I have made mistakes, I've made wrong choices, I've produced rascals, I've produced uh, 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 terrible boys, sons of Belial in this family. Bring in the word of the Lord. Let the word of God govern that family. It will shock you. At the same God who did, who did it for Jacob and Jacob became Israel and his sons became princes, he can do it for you. And he will do it for you. I thought I would have a believing amen in the house. The word of the Lord is able to shape lives. The word of the Lord is able to shape minds. The word of the Lord is able to shape families. The word of the Lord is able to shape marriages. The word of the Lord is able to shape businesses. This business you are running on Babylon principle it can run better on Zion principles. It may look slower, 
but it becomes a slow grinding machine. <laughs> All this express way to wherever. This is my year of momentum, year of acceleration. The question is acceleration to where? The people who have road crashes too, they are on acceleration. Many. So the issue is not my year of acceleration. It is acceleration to where? Bono law. Where are you going? So I'm saying to us in here, friends, that the word of the Lord is able to shape your business. It's able to take all this conny, 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 conny. You can work your business in righteousness. You can work your business according to kingdom principle. I can assure you, you will meet storms. <laughs> I can assure you, you will meet formidable opposition. But I can also assure you, if you pilot that business according to God's word, God will be on the board of that company. God will be in that company. God will underguard that company. No matter the shakings, that company will move forward. That company will find progress. That company will find prosperity. That company will find profit. Can I have an amen in the house? The word of the Lord is able to shape your business no matter the struggles. It's able to make you come out of the struggles. Make you navigate your way into good success. There is a righteous pathway into good success. Most of the time, unrighteous pathways are fast. They are short. But they can lead you away from your maker. Righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. I need to close. The word of the Lord is able to shape a community. The word of the Lord is able to shape a nation. No matter how shapeless your life is. Look at Genesis chapter 1 as we begin to close here tonight. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 4. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. That is shapeless. The earth was void. That is empty. And darkness was on the face of the deep or the face of the earth. So, shapelessness, emptiness, and darkness were to be found in this environment. God is walking in. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3. Then God said. A release of the wall. Then God said. A pushing out of the wall. Let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light. That it was good. And God divided or separated the light from the darkness. I'm showing us here from the principles in this passage. No matter the emptiness, no matter the darkness, no matter the shapelessness. If you will push the word of the Lord into that environment. Emptiness will give way. Shapelessness will give way. Darkness will give way. Can I have an amen in the house tonight? If the word could do this in the beginning, in the creation story. It can do the seemingly unimaginable in our lives today. The word of God, darkness uh, uh, hovering in your life, the emptiness uh, taking charge in your life, disorderliness taking charge in your life. Allow the word of the Lord. You can also be a channel of the word. Sp study the word, meditate on the word, and release the word, and speak the word over any environment of shapelessness. And live your life according to, to the word. In any environment of emptiness, darkness, and shapelessness. And I speak, darkness will give way. Shapelessness will give way. Emptiness will give way. Wherever you have seen enduring walks of darkness, enduring walks of emptiness, enduring walks of shapelessness, why don't you cling to God's word? Why don't you embrace God's word? Why don't you search God's word? Why don't you align your life to God's word? Because I can assure you, as God did it in the beginning, God is able to do it in your space. Darkness gives way. Emptiness gives way. Uh, shapelessness gives way. 
at the supremacy of the word of the Lord. Shall we rise to our feet tonight? The songwriter wrote the song, by your word, we conquer principalities. The word of the Lord can change you if you allow it. The word of God can change your environment if you allow it and appropriately represent it. The word of the Lord can bring hope, hope to where you have seen hopelessness. Bring light to where you have seen darkness. Bring uh, order to where you have seen disorderliness. Bring a feeling, a feeling to where you have seen emptiness. In the same emptiness on the face of the deep, as God spoke, light came, the sun came, the stars came, the moon came, vegetation arose. All manner of things came where in the beginning there was emptiness. I'd like you to lift up your voice and thank God for the supremacy of the word in your life. Thank God for the entrance of the word of the Lord in your life. The word of the Lord will not return empty. A songwriter, my senior friend wrote the song and also from a scriptural theme, Genesis chapter 49, he said the word of the Lord will not fail until Shiloh comes, until Shiloh comes, until Shiloh comes. Shiloh is a title or epithet of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said in that place in Genesis chapter 49, the word of the Lord will not fail until Shiloh comes and unto him shall the gathering of his people be. I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray that the word of the Lord will not fail in your life. The word of the Lord will not fail in your life. The word of men may have failed. Your own words in the past may have, might have failed. But begin to speak over your life that the word of the Lord will not fail in your life as you study his word and appropriate his word and apply his word and allow his word to shape your life. You allow his word to, to lighten your feet and to bring illumination to your feet. You allow his word to bring direction to your path. I mean to your path. The word of the Lord will not fail. The word of the Lord will not fail you. The word of the Lord will not fail in your marriage. The word of the Lord will not fail in your children. The word of the Lord will not fail in your family. The word of the Lord will not fail in your calling. The word of the Lord will not fail in your business. The word of the Lord will not fail in your health. In your health. He said he sent his word. And his word healed them. And his word delivered them from their destructions. The word of the Lord will not fail. Until Shiloh comes. Hey, 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 until Shiloh comes, yeah, until Shiloh comes, Jesus, the light of the world, you're the hope of all creation. Lift up your voice tonight and, and begin to speak over your life, that every aspect of your life will respond to the word of the Lord. Your heart will not be deadened to God's word. The Bible says the word of the Lord is quick and powerful. That is, it is alive and powerful. Quick and powerful means alive and powerful. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. Begin to speak into your life. Speak over your marriage. Speak over your academics. Speak over your mind. Speak over your health. Speak over your business. The word of the Lord will not fail. The word of the Lord will not fail in your own life. He says, so shall my word be that proceeds out of my mouth. It shall go and accomplish that which I please and prosper whereunto I have sent it. The word of the Lord will not fail in your own life. It will not fail in your academics. The word of the Lord will not fail in your health, in your mind, in your body, in your business, in your environment. The word of the Lord will not fail. Redeemer and mighty God, King of kings, he's the Lord of lords. Hey, Lord, let your word come alive in my life. Let your word revive me. Let your word charge me up. Let your word refresh me. Let your word restore me to your original purpose for my life. 
One more prayer. I'd like you to pray for yourself. We started to share with us a prophetic word we received of the Lord from last week. That in this time he said, ask of the Lord for rain in the times of the latter rain. And we said three things that rain wants to produce in your life. It wants to produce refreshing. It wants to produce reviving. It wants to produce restoration. To revive is to bring back to life what is dying or what is dead. Which ought not to die. To refresh is not only to have life in a weakened state, but to have it with freshness and vigor and vitality. To restore is to bring back to the original purpose of heaven. Not the original purpose of your own plan and opinion, but the original purpose of heaven. Lift up your voice and pray that the word of the Lord will produce these things in your life. The word of the Lord will revive you. The word of the Lord will refresh you. The word of the Lord will restore you to his original purpose for your life. Lord, I look to you tonight in my life, in my ministry, in my family, in my health, in my destiny, in my endeavors, in my leadership. Let your word revive me. Whatever is dying, which ought not to die. Whatever is already dead, which ought not to die. Bring back to life, oh God. And not just life, but life more abundantly. Life refreshed. Life with fresh impetus and energy. Refresh me, oh God. Like the tender herbs of the fields. With the rain of heaven. The rain of your word. Lord restore me. Wherever I have been truncated. Wherever I have been denied. Wherever I have been distracted. Wherever my dreams have been aborted. Restore me oh God to your original purpose. Revive. Refresh. Restore. Revive. Refresh, restore, revive, refresh, restore. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. His word is a lamp to our feet to see our immediate environment and a light to our path to see what is to come, to see how to get there, to see the steps to take to get there. May God's word illuminate your environment. May God's word illuminate your life. May God's word see what needs to drop out of your life. He said, how shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed, by applying God's word to his life. May God's word illuminate your path. May God's word show you where you ought to go. May God's word show you where God is taking you. May God's word order your steps in the path in the name of Jesus. May God's word revive. May God's word refresh. May God's word restore. May God's word revive. May God's word refresh. May God's word restore. On your job, in your mind, in your body, in your career, in your health, in your destiny, for your future. May God's word revive. May God's word refresh. May God's word restore in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Please lift up your hands this evening and just bless the Lord for our pastor. Lift up your hands and just pray for our pastor tonight. Let's pray for the refreshing of the Holy Spirit. Yes, let's pray for our pastor that the Lord will re refresh him. Refreshing by the power of the Holy Spirit. Refreshing by the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. From grace to grace, from strength to strength. Every day by the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Amen. Please, you may be seated as we reverence the Lord with our resources this evening. Let's give our offering to the Lord. I'd like us to give our offering to the Lord this evening. I'd like us to give our offering to the Lord. You can do that by using the uh, envelope and you can also do that by um, um, 
with the detail on the, on the screen, if you have the opportunity, if you are joining us uh, online, you have the privilege of giving your resources via the detail on the screen. If you are here, I want to give through the online means, you are also permitted to, to do it. For this week, Pastor Richard Adekola still remain the Pastor, Pastor Clinton Marsin, sorry, Pastor Clinton Marsin still remain the duty for, for, duty pastor for the week. Please, let's get across to Pastor Clinton on time. You have testimony you want to give on Sunday. You have been encouraging us. Let's give testimony. Please go ahead and get in touch with Pastor Clinton in good time. Let's remember, prayer and fasting continue. We started on um, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, to, tomorrow, Thursday, and we have been meeting in the morning and evening. So also tomorrow, 6 in the morning, on the Zoom platform, we'll be meeting 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And we'll be meeting in the evening tomorrow also, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please, let's endeavor to partake in this prayer and fasting. The joy of the Lord is our strength in Jesus' precious name. Let's bless the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise this evening. Thank you for the giving of your sons and daughters. Thank you for supplying our needs. Thank you for your blessing upon our lives. Lord, we ask that you will, this offering be accepted. You will cause the heavens to be opened upon us. You will release your blessing upon us, O oh God, even exceeding abundantly above our imaginations in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet this evening. Let's take the benediction together as we go from, from here to the glory of God. Let's go out with faith in our heart and receiving the evidence of rain in our lives in Jesus' precious name. The benediction together. One, two, go. Now may the God of peace, that great shepherd of the sheep, 